All right. My name is Peggy Castro, and we're going to be working on drawing on the right side of the brain once more by Betty Edwards. And uh, she describes in detail uh, the left-right modes of the brain. I will just summarize. Uh, the left mode is responsible for the right hand. The right mode is responsible for the left hand. She uh, summarizes them as L mode and right mode, or R mode. And anyway, the first exercise we're going to do is we're going to draw something upside down. And that may sound strange. It's a picture of Igor Stravinsky, and it's done by Picasso. And it's a very interesting painting, but we're going to do it upside down. And whatever you do, do not turn it right side up. Just start from the top down, upside down. So the instructions are... Uh, you may start anywhere you wish, the bottom, either side, or the top. Most people tend to start drawing at the top. Try not to figure out what you're looking at in the upside down image. It is better not to know. Simply start copying the lines, but remember, don't turn the drawing right side up. I recommend that you not try to draw the entire outline of the form and then fill in the parts. The reason is, is if you make any small error in the outline, the parts won't fit. One of the great joys of drawing is the discovery of how the parts fit together. Therefore, I recommend that you move from line to adjacent line, space to adjacent shape, working your way through the drawing, fitting the parts together as you go. If you talk to yourself at all, use only the language of vision, such as this line bends this way, or that shape has a curve there. Uh, when you want, come to parts that seem to force their names on you, the H-A-N-D-S and the F-A-C-E, try to focus on those parts as just shapes. Uh, you may even want to cover most of the reproduced reproduce drawing with another piece of paper. A note of caution, some of my students, uh, her students find this ploy helpful, others find it distracting. At some point, the drawing may seem like an interesting, even fascinating puzzle, rather like a jigsaw puzzle. When this happens, you will really be drawing, meaning you will have successfully shifted to the R mode and you are seeing clearly. This state is easily broken. For example, if someone were to come into the room and ask, what are you doing? Your verbal system would be reactivated and your focus and concentration would be instantly over. Remember, Everything you need to know to draw the image of Stravinsky is right in front of you. All the information is right there, making it easy for you. Don't make it complicated. It's really as simple as that. So I'm going to start, and I want you to follow along with me. And I am going to start at the top of the page. And it will take some time. So here we go. I tend to work fast, so you take your time, take as much time as you need, uh, and you may want to try to do this a second time after the video is done.
I did this once before and it came out nicely, but it may not come out as nice this time because I already have some idea what I did. And I will show you both the one I did before and the one I'm doing today to give you some idea. I am going to have to erase, and it's okay to erase, you know, some people think it has to be perfect. No, it's okay to erase, it's okay to make mistakes, and you may even get frustrated and want to start over. Again, like I say, the first time I did this, it was really easy. And I think possibly because I've already done it, it's a little more difficult. And when you get to the hands and fingers, try just to see them as shapes. And if they look a little weird, don't just make no judgments. Just look at them as shapes.
I probably shouldn't have drawn it the first time, but I wanted to have some idea of what I would be getting into. But um, I do have the first exercise to show you what it can look like. Maybe it is just as well I did it the first time because that was entirely right brain mode and I'm still switching, trying to explain what I'm doing. So it, gives you, it might even give you a better idea of what I'm trying to say.
I'll tell you, when I did it the first time, I did not erase. I barely stopped. So that just goes to show you, when you've been exposed to something and you verbalize it, uh, it makes the task even more difficult. to judge yourself or even the painting.
Okay, I am done. So, let's see, well, it didn't come out too bad. I mean, <laughs> so there you are, there you have it. And uh, let me show you the one I did for the first try. Let's see if I can find it here. This is the first one I did. And I did not stop and it was a lot easier. So uh, I think you may find this interesting. It's a fun experiment and hopefully you got into a point where you are entirely in the R mode and looking at it like a jigsaw puzzle. And I have another example here that is a little more difficult, oddly enough, and it is um, two profiles and a vase, a symmetrical vase. And the instructions for that are simply to draw, if you're right-handed, on the left side of the paper, draw the profile. And then after you complete the profile, go over the profile, naming the different parts of the head, forehead, nose, lips, and so on. Then draw a line at the very top and a line at the very bottom, which would be the top and bottom of the vase. And then complete it by drawing on the, if you're right-handed, going to the right side of the paper and drawing the, finishing the drawing. Uh, drawing the profile and trying to make the vase symmetrical. Now she s says with her students she finds this very, they find it very difficult and the reason is is because she has she has them going from verbal to nonverbal, from left brain to right brain and it creates a crunch and uh, almost a paralysis. So you might want to try that and what we were doing, what we were trying to get to with uh, the upside down drawing is um, the idea is uh, let's see um, for some reasons that are still unclear the verbal system immediately rejects the task of reading and naming upside down images the L mode seems to say in effect I don't do upside down it's too hard too hard to name things seen this way. Besides, the world is an upside down, so why should I bother? Well, that's exactly what we want. On the other hand, the R mode seems not to care. Right side up, upside down, it's all interesting. So uh, she wants you to do two things with these exercises. Uh, with the last exercise that I showed you, she wants you to find the, the crunch that can come when you go from the L mode to the R mode, uh, from verbal to spatial. And with the upside down drawing, she wants you to get into the flow ex completely in the R mode, no d disruptions from the L mode. So we w I will show you the, uh, this is what we were drawing, and it would be very difficult to draw this actually the way it is, right side up. But upside down, like this, it is a lot. It, it's interesting. It's obviously not perfect, but it is interesting. So I hope you enjoyed this exercise and continue to experiment. And remember, comparisons are odious. So thank you.